everyone, my name is Steph Castellan and thanks for joining me in today's video. If you're new here, I help new bloggers start and grow their blogs. I share all sorts of blogging tips and tricks and part of my own journey to help you in yours. Today I'm going to be sharing some pros and cons of blogging, some things that I've grown to love and some things that I've grown to not love so much. You guys know how much I enjoy talking about blogging and also just the whole online business journey, like navigating that whole thing. So let's just go ahead and dive right on in. So starting with the pros, the number one thing that I love about blogging hands down is the community, your audience, my readers, you guys. When you're vulnerable enough to write and share your experiences, your advice, your best practices from getting from point A to point B with others, you create a like-minded group of community members who just cheer you on and show up and exceed your expectations every time. I can't tell you how many times I've hesitated to post a blog post. I'm like, is this everything it could be? Do I even like wanna say this? Does this even really have a point? And every single time, you guys, someone has written to me and said, this is what I needed to hear. Thank you for writing this. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you shared this. Like every single time. When you find your niche and your voice and you're writing to your target audience, when you're writing to the people that you attract in the community that, that you're building, like they are going to cheer you on and you're cheering them on and it's this whole circle of like building a beautiful audience. I It's, it's my favorite part of blogging. The second pro is getting to share your skills and inspire others. When you're an expert in something, and you guys know I think that everyone is an expert, our experience is or expertise, but when you are helping people get from point A to point B that much quicker, faster, better through your experiences, like it's honestly so satisfying. Whether it's photography, woodworking, baking, running, whatever your skill set is, you're helping other people achieve those same skills based on your experiences, based on what you've learned, and you get to pass that knowledge on to someone else and also inspire them along the way. You're helping people who are where you were six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, like you're basically helping old use. You were the voice that maybe you needed to hear for someone else and like I, I just love that about blogging. The third thing is that you can make money blogging. It can be an additional income stream for you and you can actually turn it into a business. What sometimes starts as a hobby or just wanting to share more can quickly turn into a business. One that continues to grow and I talk about it often but like the growth of blogging is exponential as you continue to learn and continue to create content and get better at SEO and get more followers. You are able to take your passions and your skills teach people and make money doing it through blogging. Being able to do and share something that you love and being able to make money doing it, like that's a win-win in my world and you can do that through blogging. Moving on to pro number four, you own your blog. Unlike social media that could be taken from you at any time, just like shut down, you own your blog, it's yours, and your content continues to live there. So as you continue to grow your Instagram, your Pinterest, your Facebook, and those are all really great platforms to send traffic to your blog and to help it grow, but at any time those could be shut down, or at any time your account could be suspended. You don't have any control over it, where over on your blog you do. This also gets into the algorithms of social media, so if you post on Instagram, five, 10% of your followers might or might not see it. Same with Facebook and Pinterest. When over on your blog, you can be consistent posting on the same day at the same time every single week. Your followers know that they can go over there even if they're a day late and be able to find your content. They don't have to like, Go to your profile, scroll down to that one post that you did that they wanted to read. They can just go to your blog and reference whatever blog post they had seen before and want to find again. It's just super user friendly in that sense. I use social media, I'm a fan of social media, but the bulk of my content, like the good stuff, that lives over on my blog. The fifth pro is the freedom that blogging gives you. You can be as involved or not as involved as you want to be, or like super involved, you know, writing lots of content the first six months to a year, and then once you get your foundation set, backing off to one or two posts a week. And you you can do it from anywhere. Obviously you need internet connection to obviously create a blog and upload your blog post, but you can actually schedule out your blog post. So you don't even have to be there in real time. You could be traveling or on vacation or doing whatever, having already uploaded different blog posts into the queue and then they just get posted automatically on your set dates. So it allows you to stay consistent and put out content to your readers. And if you have it set up, also make money even when you're not there in person clicking the publish button. Having it set up through those automatic uploads, it just gives you the freedom to be able to do other things in life, to be creative in other ways that maybe you didn't have time for before. And speaking of creativity, the sixth pro is it's a creative outlet. When you build a blog, you're literally creating something. You're creating a website and you're creating blog posts. You're creating content for your audience. What I like about blogging is that it makes me pay attention. So I'm writing about my life and my experiences, what worked and didn't work for me. And when I do this, I have to reflect on 
all of those things. And as I create this content and get more feedback and more people included in this, like it just makes me want to continue to create more, to help more people, to inspire more people, and to just keep sharing my journey which then makes me look at life even more and makes me more creative and it's just this big circle of like creativity. I've also found that for me when I include writing in my days I tend to be more creative and want to do more things. There's this Benjamin Franklin quote that says either write something worth reading or do something worth writing about and for me that's like all right, let's go some try some new things, let's write about it, let's see how it goes and let's share that experience with others and I just love that. Love it, love it about blogging. Moving on to the cons, the number one thing is 100% time. It takes time to grow, it takes time to learn, it takes time to write, it takes time to promote. Like, I did not realize how much time would be invested into creating this blog and continuing to build this blog. I kind of went into it, and this is based on what I've seen online because I feel like a lot of bloggers make it look so shiny and awesome and like free, but I basically thought that I could build it write blogs and it would take care of itself. And I think you kind of have to move into this certain like level, maybe, maybe that's a good word, like a certain level to be able to achieve that and step away and have that freedom and, and just things kind of like on autopilot. But as you're building it and learning and all these things, like all of it takes time. The second thing is the learning curve. So I was excited about writing and sharing, but I had never built a website. I you know, knew nothing about design. And so just doing even those two things, you know, took up a lot of that time that I just talked about. But then learning about SEO and an email list was a big one. That one was a big learning curve, as well as, you know, Pinterest and other social media platforms to promote my blog. Like the learning curve for all of that was, took a lot of time, <laughs> of course. Took a lot of time. It was exhausting sometimes and very, very frustrating. There always seemed to be this like kind of corner that I turned eventually, but it definitely took a ton of research to learn some of these things and then feel confident in them. So yeah, the learning curve is pretty steep and I don't want to be a downer about this or like, you know, intimidate you from getting started, but I also want to be very real about it because it's one of the things that I think kind of halt a lot of people from continuing to build their blog. Like they get started, they're all excited, and then they just stop because, you know, they can't fight through that learning something new. So just something to think about. The third con is all of the steps that are involved in each blog post. Again, this goes back to time. There's kind of like a theme here with time. You have to do the research or at least come up with like your plan and then you write it. And then if you're including photos, you have to take those photos, edit those photos or find those photos. And then to include SEO on not only those photos, but the entire blog post, as well as promoting it and just all the things that come along with one blog post. It's a lot, it's a lot more than I was expecting expecting and sometimes when I'm like sitting at my computer screen ready to write a new one I'm like oh I can just think of I can just see all the work that I have to do that's included with this and it's like okay this is kind of intimidating but let's go ahead and do it speaking of sitting in front of a computer screen let's talk about writer's block because that's part of a blog post as well like you can have a plan <laughs> and you can have a whole schedule of like the blog post that you're gonna write about but sometimes you just sit in front of that computer and you're like Oh gosh, oh gosh. And maybe it's the overwhelming feeling based on knowing all the things that you have to do. But for me, like I write often and I force myself to write and I, and I want to write, like I enjoy writing, but sometimes that writer's block still creeps in and it's just like, oh, it, it takes a lot to like push through that. Once you do, it's usually like fine for a while again until the next round of writer's block comes about. But yeah, it is definitely a real thing. The fourth thing is that it always feels like there's more to do. When you're building a blog and an online business, like you can do so many things that it feels like you have to do them all, all at once. And, and it never really feels like it's enough. So you can always create more content and more blog posts. You can always promote more and talk about it more and get it in the face of your audience. You can always do SEO better and find better keywords. Like you can always do more and you can always do it better. And sometimes that can be really defeating um, and paralyzing and kind of put you maybe in a funk of building your blog, which I have experienced as well, but that's part of the journey and that's part of pressing on is like having a vision for how you're going to get there and then taking the steps that you need to take to master one skill at a time to learn one thing at a time and then push forward to get the results that you want. Kind of in a similar realm, the fifth thing is that there are so many 
different kinds of blogs out there. I'm not just talking about the quantity of blogs because you guys, there are over 600 million blogs on the internet today. That number is insane. So I'm not only talking about the quantity of blogs and how many different ones there are out there because if you do have your niche and you do have your voice and you're consistent, like you will grow and you will stand out for your target audience. But what I'm talking about is there's so many different options and bloggers doing things that seem to fit what you wanna do. So you could go heavy into affiliate marketing and have an affiliate blog. You could do a fashion blog. You could do a lifestyle blog. You can share heavy on Instagram or share heavy on Facebook or share solely through your email list. Like there are so many different ways to do this blogging thing and everyone has a different opinion on it. And so it's really easy to one, get distracted because you're like, oh, I should go with Instagram. And then you see someone successful on Facebook and you're like, well, Maybe I should go with Facebook and then you're like seeing someone successful on Pinterest and you're like, okay, I'll go with Pinterest, you know? Like, it's just so easy to get distracted by what people, other people are doing. And then also when you're just beginning and you don't know what works or quite what you want to do, like you haven't found your voice or the path that you're going to take to get there, you kind of bounce around hoping that something sticks instead of sticking with something and making it work. Like you're just like dabbling in a few things, doing nothing extremely well. So that's one of the cons. I mean, obviously you have to be aware if you do need to make a change, like if you're hindering what you're doing, but there's also something to be said with sticking with something long enough to learn it and doing it well and just giving it time to grow and take root. The final con, and this is especially for new bloggers or I guess anyone in the online world who is starting from square one, is that if you're not putting in the work, it's not moving forward. You are the one driving the train. There's no one else that's gonna make it happen or do it for you. So you have to build your website and blog, you have to create the content, you have to promote it. And this can be a lot of weight to bear, but it can also be really exciting because you are building something that you don't even know what the possibility of it could be. But it is one of the realities. So when you take a break or you have writer's block and you're not putting out content, like your, you know, your blog is paused because you're paused. But don't worry, I'm confident that you can push through and build something that really does start to sustain itself. Okay, that's the list. Those are some of the things that I always bring up when someone reaches out to me about blogging. You know, what I think, how I really feel about it, the good, the bad, what I love, what I don't love so much, pros, the cons. You just got it all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, maybe learned something new. Let me know down in the comments what you love about blogging or what you don't love so much about blogging. I would love to hear from you and your perspective. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell so that you're notified every time I come out with a new video every Tuesday and Friday at 10 a.m. It really helps me grow and I really appreciate that. I hope you have a fantastic day, night, evening, wherever you are. I hope it's a good one and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.